Hello friends, I am not Jim Nance. I am Kurt Berglund and I am bringing you information today that you will hopefully be able to use as a way to look at a new game and a resource for you to use if you decide to purchase the game. The game is called Sabretooth Baseball. It is the basic version of Sabretooth Baseball. It's a second version of Sabretooth. The original, longer, more comprehensive version is still available on their website. I'm going to put all of the website information for Sabretooth in the description of this video. Uh, the basic version of the game is very much like the original version of the game, but obviously made more basic. So, <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is to walk you through what you need to know about Sabretooth to be able to make an informed consumer decision for yourself. But also, if you purchase the game and you want a little help with how it works, this would be the place to come, or a place to come as well. All right, so we need to get looking at the materials for Sabretooth. Um, in this game, there are, I'm going to say, three pages of charts. Uh, this is the first one. Contains a lot of different information about Base Runner Advancement. Uh, this one is a sheet that you print that is full of reminders and procedures. And then the final uh, page to print is a XXX chart. And that is uh, for uh, different outcomes in case... Uh, you roll that on a fourth die that is rolled. Basically, what you need for Sabretooth is three D10s and one D6. The D6 could direct you to the XXX chart, and we'll look at that in some more detail. Um, so it's very, it's card heavy in terms of the information that you have. Um, the information for the vast majority of what you need, the information that you need uh, for Sabretooth is contained on the cards with a few, and I'm gonna say quick chart lookups because there's only a few pages that you're going to look at for uh, those outcomes. Now, I am not an employee of Sabretooth. I did not create this game. I am bringing this information to you as a service to you, the gamer. So with that, with that spirit in mind, let's take a look at the components for Sabretooth. Oh, one more thing. When we talk components, remember that Sabretooth right now is a PDF game only. So you only can do downloads. What you're going to see on the things that I've run off are some things on cardstock, like the cards and uh, a couple of the chart pages. But I printed the rules on regular old uh, printer paper, and um, I'm ready to play. Three D10s, one D6, and you're good. All right, now let's look at the elements of Sabretooth Baseball. It's always a challenge to get the camera in the right spot for videos like this. This is the page one of the rules. The rules are um, 30 pages of printer sheet, 30 sides of printer paper. But as you can see, if you look through here, there's a lot of white space and the font is large. So if your eyes are old like mine or not very good like mine, you're in luck with Sabretooth because 
Not only is there plenty of room to take notes, but the print is big enough for you to see very, very easily. So this is the first thing I wanted to show you is the what the rules look like. 30 single side sheets or of course 15 double side. And if you shrunk this up to what a lot of people do for printer, like a 12 point font or something, you'd be way down in the number of pages in the document. When you print the cards, you get them nine per sheet. They look like this, and then you can cut them or you can leave them as is. This is the team set for the 1967 Boston Red Sox. There are 28 players carded. The number of players carded per team is not uniform, but you get the ones that played the biggest role. Um, every team has a home park card. We're going to talk more about this. And every team has a cover card with their record, their highest achievement as a team, and their runs scored and allowed. So once you cut them from a uh, document like this, you get cards that are uh, that size that you see in front of you here. And I have my trusty tape measure, and they are uh, a little more than two and a half inches by a little more than, or not quite, three and a half inches. Um, so they are roughly baseball card size. Um, all right. So you get your cover card, and you start with every game starts with the ballpark card. Now, before we get to that, there's one thing in Sabretooth that I have found to be extremely helpful, and that is a very fine score sheet for the game. The score sheet does two things. It helps keep you organized, obviously, and it also lets you learn the game in terms of what you need to do and keep in mind. Before we get to a completed score sheet, this is what they look like generically, blank. Plenty of room for each batter and uh, a sub. Now, if you write as I did here with the 59 White Sox, I got the leadoff hitter's name here, Aparicio, and I've got plenty of room for a sub or subs, plural. There are room for 12 innings of play. There is room for 12 innings of play. If you choose to use a DH, I did not. You can do that if you want to here. And the starting pitcher goes a little bit further down on the page. This is the most helpful part of the document although I do like the ability to put the defensive characteristics of all of the players on the document. It's very helpful. I recommend that you do it, especially when you are learning the game. But also, as the visitors are batting, there is room to put the ratings defensively for the home team's defense. So even though this is a two-page document, visiting lineup, home lineup, because you put the home team's defense, the opposing team's defense at the bottom of the hitting page, you do not flip back and forth except when the inning is over. I hope that makes sense. So it's really convenient for you to be able to check fielding ratings just by looking at the bottom of the page. Very, very helpful. And the other thing I like, and this may just be me, but I love being able to write notes. And there's, there's a huge box here on the page to write notes about gameplay or rules that you want to keep in mind or however you might want to include that information. 
Alrighty, so I just mentioned that the thing that you do at the start of every game is to start with the weather. And this is before you make out the starting lineups. The ballpark card that I'm going to demonstrate this with is for the 1962 Los Angeles Angels. It is Chavez Ravine. If you remember your Angels history, you know that in 1961, their first park was Wrigley Field in Los Angeles, the site of Home Run Derby with Mark Scott and a cast of sluggers from the early 60s. In 1962, while their park was being built, they worked out a deal with the Dodgers to use Chavez Ravine as their home park. So this is where the 62 Angels took up shop. Now, on your ballpark on your score sheet there's room for you to indicate on both sides adjustments for left-handed batters and right-handed batters based on the weather and so let's look at that what i'm saying is that the game that i set up for myself is a day game which means that home run chances are plus two during the day then you roll two dice, two D10s, and you look at the weather chart. Now it's Los Angeles, it's Chavez Ravine. One and double zero in this case means 100. So if I were to do this, I rolled a zero one. <laughs> so it's a rain out, but I have to re-roll. It could be a rain out. But I have to re-roll, and if I do, and I get a one through 10, it's a rain out. I didn't, I got a 61, so it's not a rain out. There are other items here. If I get a rain roll, that means there's rain happening during the game, and you subtract five from home run chances. If it's a rain possibility, you need to re-roll each inning for the weather update. And if there's no rain, and in Chavez Ravine, of course, there very rarely would be, 4 through 100 would be your biggest chance. So that's your first roll for weather. Your second roll is for wind. 57 is what I rolled. And because that falls between 24 and 100, there's no wind. All right, and then we have left-handed batters and right-handed batters that we add in on the fly for home run chances. Um, all right, give you an idea of what a different card would look like where actually there is different kinds of weather. Here is Chicago's Comiskey Park. You can see if you compare the two cards, you can see that Chicago's weather is a whole lot more likely to be inclement than inclement than oops than Los Angeles weather. All right. So let's take a look at the batter and pitcher cards as we work through the instructions for the game give you a little bit of famili familiarity with each. Uh, for the purposes of our examples here, we're going to pull out Louis Aparicio, the leadoff batter for the 59 White Sox, and his opposing pitcher in the game that I set up, Bo Belinsky of the 1962 Angels. All right, so the things that you see on Aparicio's card obviously starts with, let me zoom in on this a little bit here. Let's, let's get you a little bit closer to the action. There we go. All right, so we start on Aparicio's card with the team name, which way he bats, 
And then we get to the platoon number. This is a platoon grade. He has ranked all hitters and all pitchers, as you can see here on Belinsky's card, are ranked zero to two. Zero would indicate that he's about the same against lefties and righties. Uh, sorry, zero to three. Three would be indicative of a player that has a much higher success rate when he has the platoon advantage. So for Aparicio, it would be against lefties. Uh, okay. So he has a slight advantage against lefties. Okay. Bunt rating is a grade. Uh, and then we go to run rating is a grade, stolen bases is a grade, and stamina is a guide to tell you um, when he may have to rest, which would not be very often in his case. Then you can look down the card, and if you're familiar with how uh, baseball works. You can pretty much guess how these work. This is his walk rating. He is, does not get hit by pitches due to the X. Strikeout rating, ground into double play chance, straight grounder chance. The G plus is where the runners advance. The only out can be at first base on Aparicio as a hitter. Pop up is an infield fly rule type of out. Line out is a line drive out, and if there is a runner on second, he's automatically doubled up. A runner on first can also be doubled up uh, based on his run rating, and so you, this is how you could get in Sabretooth a triple play. Fly ball minus is a short fly. Uh, you can tag up from third, but no other advancement can happen. Fly out is a fly, is a regular fly out, and runners can advance to it, can attempt to advance the next base. And fly plus is a deep fly. And that can be a home run or a bases clearing double or a fly out, depending upon the dimensions of the park. All right, hit is a base hit, and then you follow that up with a second roll to determine what type of hit is going on. Single minus is a one base advancement. Regular single, one B single, 21 to 73 for Aparicio is a single that allows runners on first and second to attempt to take an extra base using their run rating, which you see in Aparicio right there. And there's a chart for how to do that. Single plus is a single that automatically advances all runners two bases. So the pattern here is clear, double minus two base advancement for base runners, straight double, you can try and advance the runner on first home based on their run rating and double plus is a double that clears the bases those are your offensive card uh keys all right the base running rating that you see on Aparicio is between 20 to 90 and it's used on plays where the runner advances Attempts to advance an extra base. Uh, stolen base numbers have two parts. The first one is his ability to get a jump. And he's graded 15 to 100 on this skill. And then the second number is what happens if he does get a good jump. And he's, this is graded 20 through 90. Now, you can still attempt to steal if you don't get a good jump, but you have to subtract 20 from the second number, so Aparicio would then be down to a 61 safe chance. All right, bunting is A or B, good or fair, and that applies to sacrifice and suicide squeeze bunts. Fielding ratings 
tells you the position the player played, their um, range, their error number, and their arm number. Range, error, and arm. All right. Range is a one to seven scale. Error numbers are one to nine. Nine is the worst, one is the best. And arm grades can adjust the run rating of the batter on a ground out when there is a double play chance. Catchers have separate passed ball ratings and throwing arm ratings as well. All right, now we're up to Belinsky's card. What is the information on this card? Well, you get his team, the season, which way he throws, his platoon, which means that because he's a left-handed batter, he's slightly better uh, against... There's zero to two and pitchers, sorry. Uh, zero means little to no difference. Two means he's got a big platoon advantage against left, in this case, left-handed batters. He's in the middle on that one. And so what would happen is you would combine these two. If there's a platoon advantage, then the chart would be checked. In this case, it is negated, and that would be... Um, oh, no, wait. Abrisio would have the advantage because he's a right-handed batter, so he would have the one. All right. Now, down here is how the batter, the pitcher's card changes the batter's numbers. So, Belinsky, if you don't remember very well, he was a little bit wild. And even in his best year, which was 1962, he was a little bit wild. So, even though Aparicio did not walk very much, Belinsky gives him six more walk chances. A negative number is worse, is better for the pitcher, and a positive number is worse for the pitcher because depending upon how the pitcher is rated here, he can reduce walk chances or he can increase walk chances. Uh, hit by pitch, same way. Strikeouts, same way. Um... F2G, if you get a flyout, you reroll one die, flyout, straight flyout, not a minus, not a plus, but a straight flyout, you get, you fall in this rating, and you reroll one die, you get a one to five, you change this to a ground out. He was obviously a ground ball pitcher. Hit chances are reduced by four. Two, three is the ability of the pitcher to reduce doubles and triples to singles or to give up more doubles than the average pitcher. He comes out neutral on that, but he did give up some gopher balls. And you can see that from uh, the plus nine. Fielding, this is his, these are his fielding numbers. Okay. Uh, ST has to do with his stamina. Um, the RL number is the relief stamina and frequency. The first number is his stamina and represents the number of batters faced. In his case, in relief, he can go 12 batters. And then one is the number of days per week. Monday to Sunday, he can appear in relief, so not very often, but when he does, he can give you 12 batters. This is start and relieve. This is the frequency with which uh, a, bat a pitcher can switch between starting and relieving. And that walks you through 
the pitcher's card. All right, now, before we look at the charts, I wanna show you how the batter-pitcher interaction works in Sabretooth. Then we'll take a look at the charts. All right, so, In Belinsky's case, he is a plus six for walks. In this case, you look at the lowest G on the batter's card, which is 21, and then you wipe out the first six results with that become walks. So if you roll a 21 to 27, those become uh, walks on Aparicio's card. No, I'm wrong. 20 plus six would be 21 to 26 become walks. The reverse can also happen if Belinsky had a minus number then the lowest walks are removed and changed to ground outs. So in this case, let's say Belinsky was a minus two. Then numbers one and two on his walk rating would become ground outs. Same thing for hit by pitch. Plus one for hit by pitch gives him one hit by pitch. And so uh, the lowest number here, so that would be number 27, let's say, would become a hit by pitch. Strikeouts, plus three. The highest numbers on ground out become strikeouts. So in this case, it would be 37, 38, and 39 become strikeouts. And Aparicio, therefore, is more likely to strike out against Belinsky he's also more likely to walk than against the average pitcher. All right. Um, that's pretty much, oh, hits. Here we go. So, four hits, when the number is positive, down here, the highest numbers on the flyout become hits. In this case, for Belinsky, it's negative. Belinsky allowed fewer hits than usual than the average pitcher. So, the first two numbers then on hits become, uh, I'm sorry, the first four numbers on hit become flyouts. 77, 78, 79, and 80 would become flyouts. There is a chart in the instructions that shows you how to make these adjustments. I selected Belinsky for this example because he was wild, he was a strikeout pitcher, and he did re re allow a reduced number of hits. So you'll get a sense from him as kind of an extreme pitcher of how you might need to adjust the batter's chart. This is how batters and pitchers interact in the game. <clears throat> now I mentioned before that one of the important pieces of Sabretooth is the, is the six-sided die. If there's ever a one or a two as the result on your six-sided die, you roll two D10s and that could result in a range check, an error check, or a platoon check, or a triple X chart check. That would cause you to then need to look at the charts that are included in the game, and that's where we will look right now. One of the things that I'm sure you've noticed in what I've shown you is that there are no positions for the ground outs to go to or the fly outs or the pop outs or the line outs. When those occur, 
you roll a d10 and based on what happened and whether the batter was left-handed or right-handed you get the position that the ball was hit to if there is a platoon check there is a chart so while you do not see lefty righty splits on either the batter or the pitcher's card it is accounted for in this game in the platoon rating and then by checking the platoon chart for how play is impacted there are charts for sacrifice bunt suicide squeeze and how to negotiate a double play attempt This is the triple X chart and the error check chart. Very straightforward. When those possibilities come up, due to what you rolled on the uh, D6, these are the charts that you would consult. A 2D10 resolves the play and you move on. Also included in the play materials are charts to remind you of how you need to change the batter pitcher adjustments based on the pitcher's card uh, how batters advance what you need to remember for tagging up how force plays work and arms work and then some sort of generic information about the game that you need to keep in mind that's it that's the end once you look at these items and the player cards that you are looking at, you are ready to play Sabretooth. Now, the best way to do it, in my experience, is to start with the score sheet. You start with the score sheet and the weather card, and you establish what's going on in this part of the score sheet first, I write it on both sides so I don't have to flip back and forth. And then I go to my starting lineups. Now the first set of cards for Sabretooth Basic, as I call it, is a set of great teams between 1959 and 1972. There's a lot of fun teams in this set. There's, all, there's American League teams and National League teams and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I've had fun already. Game time is getting closer to 30 minutes for me now, depending upon uh, how many runs are being scored. I think my first game was around 45 or 50 minutes of play, but... I'm, I'm under 40 pretty much every time now, and I've even been under 30 a couple of times. Um, and I guess that's it. I have not put a demo game of Sabretooth Basic on my channel yet, but I will do that in the next week or two. Uh, but uh, for now, this is the information that you need as a resource to get a sense of the game and to give you a little bit of a tutorial for how to play. I hope it's been helpful. Remember the website for Sabretooth will be in the comment or in the description for the video below. And you can click on that and see what all is available for purchase. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has been helpful for you. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel, my friends. I need your help, and I hope you have a good day. So long, everybody.